I don't, I will never be able to stand here and not thank you God for the opportunity. Because this is really and truly more than just an opportunity. This has been a week, a week and a half that God has been sharing with me. I, I shared with the prophet just now, this afternoon while preparing and, 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 and I don't want to use the word getting myself ready. I don't want to say that. But the house is quiet and I'm taking time to go sit and go through my, my notes. And it's as if the Lord is saying, I don't want to close it. I want you to go sit. I said to Michelle, I sat in the sun this afternoon, listening to the birds and, and, and enjoying the sunlight, the, the warmth outside. And for a moment, I felt, yo, I should actually be. And really, they, they, they came such a peace over me that I decided I'm going to enjoy that a little bit longer. So I am really blessed and I'm thankful for you being here this evening and uh, let me ask you, are you ready to receive what the Lord has been sharing with you? I am really excited about this and uh, the topic for this evening is building the house. This morning and still this evening as we enjoyed communion. The table speak about keys and building a house there's keys there's very important keys that we need we've got some some experienced qualified builders in the house with us yes. and if I call them Martins to the front now Martins will tell us each and every one of us that building is not for you but one of the, the keys for building is commitment. So I really want you tonight to sit back. If you've got a pen, I want you to make notes. There's, there's really important things that we have to take note of. So the topic for tonight is building the house. When we speak of building the house, when, when we speak of that, uh, that we're busy building, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Is the building. Mm. You actually, you see the building, am I correct? Yeah. yeah. So, this evening, I'm going to share with you something that Pastor and Neil share, shared with us. And for the last two months, this has been really and truly, I've been making it mine mm. to be able tonight to share it. So I want you, as, as I go on, I want you to, to think of and I want you to see this process that I'm going to share with you tonight, building the house. The house that we, that, uh, that we, that we start building. The house that we go starts with this house. This is the first house that we bought. Yeah. And after building this house, then we start building the house of my family. Then we start building the house of my, my and my wife, my children, my grandchildren. And then we start building this house. This house that we come together, that we worship, and that we come together as the body of Christ, as God's children, to enjoy fellowship and to enjoy each other. So, if I may call it tonight, and I'm going to call it a couple of times tonight, so I don't want you to think that I'm repeating myself, not at all. But we're going to, I'm going to call it tonight the three in one house. So if I speak about the three in one house, I'm speaking about the house that we're building, your personal house, your family house, and this house. This is what we received, and this is where everything started. This journey tonight started here. 
This is a, a wooden house. And one evening I was sitting looking at this house. When this house started speaking to me. When this started speaking to me about you know, the three in one house that we are working. This is a three in one house where God ought to be, where God wants to dwell in. So it is our responsibility for this house to be strong and to be clear of unwanted rubbish and nonsense in and around, in and around the house. Because this house has to be suitable for God to live in. Do yeah. you agree with me? Yeah. If we want God to live inside this house, in my family's house, in this house here we are tonight, this house has, has to be clear. It has to be clean. Yeah. It has to be well presented yeah. for the King of Kings to stay there. Before I continue, let us look at building a house. Just for a few moments, um, what is required? I'm not going to stand still and ask you tonight. I, I've got a couple of pointers, but if there's something that I miss, put up your hand. Because I will make a note of that. I think the first thing that, that's required when we are about to start building is a stand. Yeah. Because without a stand, you can't go. The second thing, a very important thing, is a plan. Because if you don't have a plan, you're going to go illegally. Yeah. The fourth thing that I've got is qualified builders. A qualified team to help you go. Very important thing is funds. Without funds, nothing is going to happen. Yeah. You're not going to be able to have a stand. You're not going to be able to have the material. So funds is very important yeah. in building. I highlight it and, and I want you also to highlight it tonight, is the foundation. Mm -hmm. Because without the foundation, the house or the building, the project will not stand. We will get it off the ground, but it's not going to stay. Enough material. You don't want to build halfway and then red face stand and you can't complete the building. Teamwork. A team that's building with you. A team that understands you and you understanding your team. What to be on the lookout for when we build it? The very first thing that I wrote down is the weather. The weather plays a very important role in building the house. Frequent inspections, frequent checks. You know, I, I, I know Martins so many times, he's running from the one side to the other side because of him checking and investigating, looking at what they busy building. Because if he does not, things can happen. Always have your plans on site. Mm -hmm. The plans are so important. There's a few warnings that I want to share with you uh, tonight that I want you to take note of. Your project, the house that we're busy building, will lose more than just its value when you allow add-on storages, those buildings that we add onto the house. That's not supposed to be there. Yeah. Not checking the fences and the gates to your property. The invaders, the squatters that can come and, and, and take over your place. Not maintaining the stand yeah. attracts thieves. It attracts robbers. 
How many times do we see on Facebook all these wonderful and old uh, railway stations that's been plundered? There's nothing left. Old houses, museums, does not matter, schools, that's been robbed from everything. Window frames, everything. It's basically just the foundation that still stands. Why is that? Because in the property, the building has been left unattended. Yeah. Not maintaining the house causes small cracks. And those cracks can become a real issue. You can bring a house down. Building is not only expensive. It can become a problem or even problematic when we start taking shortcuts. When we start looking for ideas that is not planned, part of the plan. And when you aren't available in the building process. Yeah. Then the building becomes more than just a problem. It becomes an out of control project. Are you with me? Do you, do you see this house that we're building? This three in one house? Are you with me? Yes. yes. A question came to me. What do you build on? What is it that you building your house on? And I want to share with you from Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. And I'm sharing with you from the Amplified. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, a prudent, a practical, a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the wind blew and, the, and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a stupid, a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and, the, and beat against that house and it fell. And great and complete was the fall of it. The same winds, the same storms, the same thing came to both the houses. The foundation caused the house not to fall. Yep. Yes. I would like to share with you a few principles that is very necessary if you want your house not only to stand, but to be a pride and a joy to God. To be a pride and a joy to God to share with you. But before I do that, I want you to listen to a statement that Pastor Anil made. And I'm going to share it with you. And if you can, I want you to write it down. He said, It is not what you are that holds you back. It is your lack in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And your lack of knowledge of Christ that holds you from your God-given goal in His kingdom. Yeah. It's not what you are that holds you back. It's your lack of relationship with the Holy Spirit and your lack of knowledge with Christ that holds you from your God-given assignment in His kingdom. You've got an assignment. You've got a goal that God has for you. But it's us keeping us away from that. It's us that's hindering ourselves from that goal. Let me share these principles with you in this, this 15 that I want to share with you tonight. Number one, be a hard worker, doing more than what is expected from you. Do not fall into the trap of measuring your worth against yourself. Do not measure your worth against your, your, your job title, your position at work, or what you are in this city. Your worth is in Jesus. Yeah. 
That's where we ought to measure our work in and work. That measuring tape is called Jesus. A big character builder is enthusiasm. But nobody can issue you and me with enthusiasm. Truth. That is something that you've got to work for. That's something that you've got to make work in your life. Yeah. It's something that you have to create and put into your own life. To make this three in one house of yours a success. You have to attend to all three of these houses with the same efforts, the same eagerness, and the very same into the enthusiasm. Yeah. It is important not to lose sight of who the owner and the occupant of the house is. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 10 verse 4 says, he, be, he becomes poor when he, work, when he works with a slack and an idle hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. The hand of the diligent makes rich. Matthew 5 verse 41 And if anyone forces you to go on a mile, go with him two miles. The second point that I want to share with you is believe that you are equipped and just as important and capable to finish this three in one house of yours. Never, never take failure in as your partner. Yeah. Your partner is our Spirit. Yeah. Never allow failure near your house. Failure does not bomb, it breaks down. And it attacks the foundation of your house. When God created you, He created a good and a qualified builder. He's only asking from you and me to adhere to the plan that the architect has with you for your house. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient. In Christ sufficiency. Can you say that tonight in your building process? Are you self sufficient? Self -sufficient. Yes, we are. Self -sufficient. We are. But you see, the enemy is lying to us. He's telling us we're not sufficient. I want to tell you tonight the architect who is the plan for your house is calling you tonight self sufficient. Yeah. Because he is the sufficient one in your life. What more do we want? Knowing that everything has been accomplished for us. It's been done. We, 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 we do we partake of it this morning. It's been done. It's been given to us. We have to take it. We have to make it work. Ours. We struggle with building and completing. Because we, love, we lost touch with the architect. Yeah. And the blueprint. He has for our house. Because we're not spending time with architect. Quality time. As we would while building the house. Number three. Plan your work. And work your plan. Mm -hmm. When last did you stop to look at the progress? To do the inspection required, understanding that a proper inspection is going to cost you time. A proper inspection is not a run in and run out. There's time involved. Ask any builder. Building the house needs some definite prioritization. Maybe it's time for some of us to look at this list 
and to make sure that we are so, that we are really and truly prioritizing the correct things. Because we all have priorities. But the question not tonight is, is it the correct priorities? Are we busy with the correct things in building the house? The most important thing is the plan on which we go. Yeah. The blueprint that God got. Where is your blueprint? See, this is our blueprint. Mm -hmm. There was a, a saying on, on Facebook a week or so back. I tried to find it, I couldn't. But it said something about when your Bible, when a person's Bible is, is falling apart, when it's full of writing and markings, and that Bible, you can see that Bible's falling apart. The owner of that Bible is not falling apart. Yeah. He's standing strong. Because the blueprint, he's, going, he's gone through it over and over again. He knows the blueprint. What is your blueprint? The perfect example is given to us in Nehemiah 4, where we see the builders rebuilding the wall with one hand, yeah. having a sword yeah. in the other hand. May I ask you, do you still prioritize this principle of building your house? Proverbs 24 verse 3 and 4 says, Through skillful and godly wisdom a house, that's a life, a home, a family, is born. And by understanding and it's, uh, it, it is established on sound and good foundation, and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. I, I want to jump with joy. Because if we build correctly, if I understand this word correctly, every chamber, every room of my house should be full of riches. Yeah. If we build correctly, and if yeah. the foundation is good, if you know the architect, and yeah. if you work according to the blueprint, your house should be full of riches. Number four, like cement, honesty and integrity are something that we can't build without. True. We can. I saw photos uh, of a school that was well, that is being built in a rural area without cement. The bricks was laid on top of each other. And then there's no guarantee that this school will stand. But even more important, this building is and can be a life-threatening place for everyone in and around that school. True. Each and every day. The question that came to me, will you trust an unsteady structure? If I, if I can stand with you tonight and I ask you, will you trust this school? What will your answer be? A structure that can collapse at any time. If you don't, why do we expect our families to trust structure. Why do we, why do we expect God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to trust that structure? The structure that we was evolving. Why should anyone close to us trust the structure? When the house is strong, when it is safe to be occupied, there is a sure promise. And I want to share that with you from Isaiah 33, verse 15 and 16. He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises gain from fraud and from oppression, who shakes hand, his hands free from the taking of bribes, 
who stops his ears from hearing uh, of bloodshed and shuts his eyes to avoid looking upon evil. Such a man will dwell on heights. Yeah. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. His bread will be given him. Water will be for him. Issue. Number five, your gifts, the gifts that you receive, are one of your greatest tools in building your house. Yeah. Use it. You see, so, so many times, before I carry on, so many times we want to use a leader's tool. So many times I want to use the prophet or the minister, the pastor's tool, because it's a better tool. God gave us each and every one special tools. Yeah. It's time that we start using our tools in building our, our house. Your abilities, your interests, as well as your knowledge is part of the gifts that you receive. Do not neglect ne ne them while you was visible in your house. 1 Timothy 4, verse 14 to 16. Do not neglect the gift which is in you. That special inward endowment which was directly imparted to you by the Holy Spirit by prophetic utterance when the elders laid their hands upon you at your ordination. Practice and cultivate and meditate upon these duties. Throw yourself wholly into them as your ministry so that your progress may be ever, ev uh, evident to everybody. Look well to yourself, to your own personality, and to your teaching. Preserve, uh, uh, persevere in all these things, hold to them, for by doing so you will save both yourself. And those yeah. who hear you. What is the difference between a house that was built in the 1800s and the house being built today? What's the difference? There's a huge difference. You know, the, the, the thing is, Today, there's, there's some of God's children that's how, that whose house is still looking exactly the same as in the 1800s. Yeah. This is a modern area. God is a moving God. Yeah. Shouldn't our houses also start looking different than what they used to look a hundred years ago? Yes. Isn't it time that we, that we start renovating and start making changes? In the houses that God has given us. Yeah. Look well to yourself, your house, for then you can build the house of your family. You see, sometimes we want to build. We want to build the family house. We want to build this house. We want to build the neighbor's house. But we're struggling with our own house. Yeah. You see, I said it earlier, your enthusiasm must be the same in building all three your houses. Yes. I think it's time that we start realizing my neighbor's house has nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to start looking at my own house. Maybe then when we start doing that, prayer rooms will be full. Yeah. Maybe when we start looking at our own houses, changes will happen. But we're looking at somebody else's house. We want to judge somebody else's house. And not my own. It is time that we all realize we cannot build a family house or this house if our own house is broken, half built, or in many cases neglected. There is a saying, I wrote it in Afrikaans, so I'm going to translate it to English. There is a saying, a mechanic's car, or a builder's house, or an electrician's electrical wiring, 
there's always a mess. Or there's always something missing. There's always an issue. I want to say to you tonight, it's time that we start to kick sayings like this in the teeth. And get it out of our systems. It's time that we start finishing our houses. It's time that we start attending to our houses and build it brick. That we stick to the plan. That we stick to the architect's blueprint that he's got for our house. Because the owner of the house does not want to sit with our house. The owner of the house, the owner of the property, does not want to rent somewhere else. It's his property, it's his house. But we need to finish it. We need to start prioritizing the building for the owner. Yeah. Number six, never forget who you bought for. Never forget who you bought for. It is good to be reminded who you work for. But if I ask you tonight, when last that you sit down and listen to the plans and the new ideas that the architect has for your house? When last did you sit down without asking questions? Because the reality is, we're asking too much questions. Yeah. The moment that we see the blueprint, the moment that we see what's on the table, we start asking questions because it might take a little bit too much. It's going to cost me maybe just a little bit more than I intended. That house from the 1980s and the house for today are different. But if we start listening to the, the, the holder, the architect, the one who's got the blueprint with it, if we start listening to him and spend time with him around the table, he will show us when we have to make some changes to make the house look practical. Yeah. To make the house more, and I don't want to say likable to the people, likable to the owner. But it is good that the house is also likable for the neighbors. Yeah. It is good that people walking past the house will look at this house and say, oh, why can't my house be like this? And maybe they can come knock on your door and ask you for advice. Who is your architect? Because I think I want to make use of him as well so that my house can look like yours. But it's not going to happen if we don't take care of the house. Are you still building according to the plan? Or are we allowing shortcuts and other things that, that's going to cost us time, energy, and yes, even money. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 8 says, Lean on trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding in all your ways know recognize and acknowledge him and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths be not wise in your own eyes reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn it, it entirely away from evil. It shall be help to the nerves and sinus and marrow and moisture to your bones. Wow! Is that not a promise? If we start adhering to the architect? Ephesians 6 verse 6 and 7 says, Not in the way of the eye service, as if they were watching you, and only to please men, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God heartedly and with your whole soul, rendering service readily with good will as to the Lord and not to men. Yeah. 
This house that we visit called. I can't build your house and you can't build mine. True. But we have to build like we are building for God only. Yeah. Nobody else. Nobody else. God will not point fingers at us and show us. God will say, well done my son and my daughter for continuing building the house and getting the house ready and steady and strong. Don't let people People will always disappoint us. People will also always look at us differently. People will always have a remark about your house. Who's, who's, who's the remark? Who's point is more important about your house? People's or God's? God's. Number seven. Being capable in building is important. I really want to say to you tonight, being capable is important in your building process. Yeah. Know who you are. Know who you are and explore your capabilities. You see, if we're not going to explore, it's not going to be a wow place. If we're not going to explore, we're not going to see what God has knew for us, for our house. We have to explore. Use your imagination. It's, it's like when the, uh, the little ones come and visit and you give them a blank piece of paper with a couple of crayons. They color that paper. Man, sometimes it looks like a scrub. But you know what? To them, that's the best. That's the nicest picture there is. And there me and Michelle, when they come and visit, and those pictures on up against the wall where they put them, they ask, where's our picture? The one that I colored in. You see, there's the enthusiasm. That's a something that we have to get back into our building process. That's why. Better yourself and never stop trying. So many of us, so often, so quickly, throw in the towel. I can't, it's too difficult. It's time that we stop. We've got victory. And it's been given to us for free. We don't deserve it. But we receive that because of God's grace. So let's start using that in our building. Attending to our own house. Expand your knowledge while you keep focus on the project that you're busy with. Study. Your brain needs fresh and new food. Do you agree with me? Yes. If there's no new and fresh food, it's going to be old, old age. Like the young ones will sometimes say, say to us, you are some things. But make sure that the food that we're busy feeding, our spirits, our brains, our body spirit, is healthy food. Mm -hmm. To grumble and to mur 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 murmur will only cause you to rebel because it takes your focus from building. Yeah. As you build, keep in touch with the architect who has the plan for your house. Really. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed of his house. Correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of God. On this topic, I, I want to say something tonight. And Paul is speaking to Timothy, am I correct? So when we read this, 
from your Bible, from your blueprint, God is speaking to you. Am I right if I say that? Mm -hmm. Then Paul says that we ought to skillfully, rightly and skillfully be able to teach the world. Pastor and Nir highlighted the standard that you set for your house. There's three in one house that we're speaking about tonight that you are building are directly related to your view of God. You see, the way that you look at your house tonight, that's the way that you see God. That's the way that you experience God. That's the way that if you reach out your hand and you feel God or you don't feel God. Mm -hmm. If you have been to describe your house to me tonight, if you've got to stand up and describe your house so that we can see what your house looks like, how will you describe it? How will your family and your loved ones describe your house this evening? What does your house, the, the place that you prepare for Holy Spirit, what does your house look like to God? You see, this is questions that we've got to ask ourselves. Because if we're busy with investigating, if we're busy looking at the house to see if this house is steady, if this house is strong, then this is questions that we've got to ask. And not all the time will it be easy answers. Because there's answers that's going to hurt. Because so many times we keep a close eye on certain areas of this building. But let's be honest. The ones that can really say what your house looks like, in the, what condition your, wife, your house is in, is your wife, your husband, your children. See, we can go around and we've got this fancy house, but inside this house, there's chaos. Inside this house, there's no order, there's no love, there's nothing inside, it's an empty house. That's not the house that God wants us to create. That's not the house that God wants us to build. God is love. So the first thing that, that ought to be in our houses is love. And if there's love, it means God is there. That is what God is asking from you and me. Number eight. Ask God for wisdom when you make choices and decisions. The reason for so many struggling with asking from God wisdom, wisdom and, and even advice, guidance and help is because of the long distance schools that we are busy with. Long distance schools are not only noisy, the reception is not always clear. Yeah. Let me put it to you like this. If you are out in the garden like I was this afternoon, out in the garden and you see this new flower, I mean it's flower time now, the flowers are blooming and, and, and the new life is coming back into nature. And you see this beautiful wow flower in your garden. What do you do? Do you, I think the kids are doing that, but do we take our cell phone from our pocket and I phone Michelle inside and I tell Michelle, Michelle, come look at the garden, that flower here in the garden. And then I wait for Michelle to come outside. Or do I run inside and I say, Michelle, come look here. There's this beautiful flower outside. I want you to have a look at it. <laughs> and I take her with me to come and look at the flower. It is time that we as God's children realize this. God is not a distant God. Yeah. God is a God with us. He took up His residence inside your house. Yeah. 
that beautiful flower, God wants you to come inside the house and come call him. Come speak to him about that beautiful flower that you are seeing outside. Come speak to him about something that, that's grabbing your attention. And share that with him. When we get to that place, then we will start to realize God is not distant. A distant. God is here. God is in this house. Mm -hmm. Yes, God is my neighbor's house. God is in your house. That's why God is so super special. That is why we, we all can say, He's in my house because He's there. The thing is, do we have a relationship with God? Or is it that self and that long distance relationship? James 1 verse 5 says, If any one of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the given God who gives. That's something that we have to underline and highlight. Who gives mm -hmm. to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly, without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given to you. You see, even even if you allow something to the house, even if you if you spend less time than you should, God is not going to to withdraw, but He's asking us for us to come back so that we can correct that that's not correct. Number nine, do not waste your time and don't allow your time to be stolen. Yeah. Be on time and do as you say you would. And something that I want to share with you tonight, something that so many of us are at fault with. My brother, I will pray with you. I will pray for you. My brother, my sister, I will pray for you. Can I tell you something? That's a lie. Because the devil is going to keep, keep us so busy with something that you're not going to pray. When you make a promise to pray for somebody, pray there. Don't neglect it. Because there's a chip, there's a crack that's forming on one of the walls mm -hmm. that can make a wall collapse. Mm -hmm. You see, if I say I, I will pray for you, it's a promise that I make. God says, I will keep you from your promises. Yeah. Be productive. Because a young builder is looking at you while you are building your house. A young builder is about to start building his house. And he's keeping you. The way that you build. He's keeping that in his eye. Yeah. So he's looking at somebody. He's looking at you. And his house will most definitely Almost look like that. Yeah. Is it not time that we start looking at how my house looks like so that my children's house one day, my son's house one day, will be a strong house? Mm -hmm. That the foundation that my son's house is built on will be a strong foundation. Yeah. Isn't that what we should start giving to the young ones, to the youth, to the young adults? Instead of showing them slack hands. It's in the time that we start building again with one hand and a sword in the other hand. Because there's people watching us. Yeah. We all need an off day. Plan it. Because we can even waste quality time on an off day. Ephesians 5 verse 15 and 16 says, Look carefully then how you walk, how you build your house. Live purpose, purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and the witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each and every opportunity because the days are evil. Ephesians 6 verse 5 and 6 says, Servants, 
Be obedient to those who are your physical masters, having respect for them and eager concern to please them in singleness of motive and with all your heart, as service to Christ himself, not in the way of my service as they were watching you, not only to please men, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God heartedly and with your whole soul, building the house for God wholeheartedly and with your whole soul. That's what tonight is about. That we realize that this building is for God. My attitude, my everything that I'm building with should be I'm building for God. Yeah. Because He's the occupant. He's the owner. And He wants, He wants to have communion with you. I want to ask you, if, if, if you've got a, if we've got a meet somewhere for communion, I invite each and every one of you for communion in this place that's falling apart. Are we going to enjoy it? No. But if we come to a place like we're sitting here tonight, beautiful music, it's a calm, it's a communion table, we're going to enjoy it. Am I correct? Yes. Why do we want God to have it any other way? Why, don't, why can't we allow God to also have this beautiful, quiet place, neat place, well-built, strong place, full, uh, without any of this add-ons and nonsense that we find in so many houses for Him to enjoy with us? I think the important thing is that we realize God wants to enjoy it with you. As much as he wants you to enjoy it with him. Number ten. Develop a strong and a steadfast character. A strong character is the best ingredient for building a strong and a reliable yeah. house. Yeah. And if I speak about a strong character, I'm speaking of a Christ-like. Cultivate the quality of discipline, determination, integrity, sincerity, honesty, faith, yeah. patience, and courage in your character. Caring is important. That is to care for your house, your family house, as well as this house that we gather in as believers. Number 11. Tame your tongue. Refrain from all gossip. Be careful of the critic that you give. And do not judge. On this point, let me share with you what is God's view on this. And I'm going to share with you from James 3, verse 8 to 10. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. It is a restless, an undisciplined evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and the Father, and with it we curse men who were made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes forth blessings and curses. These things, my brethren, ought not to be so. One of my spiritual fathers, uh, whom, whom Peter, we call him BD, Big Daddy, he had this saying, and I'm sure that that saying is still today. From the same water well, there's not a valve there at the bottom somewhere that we open and close for fresh water to come out and stinking rotten water to come yeah. out. From that fountain can come one source of water. What water is coming from your fountain? What water do you allow coming from your fountain? You see, most of the times, that pleasant water is in good times. But when we come to desert times, what water do you allow coming from the water well? Ephesians 4 verse 29. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word or unwholesome or worthless talk ever 
come out of your mouth. But only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the, of the, and the occasion, that it might be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. Did you hear what I just read? That that comes from your mouth should be a blessing. We heard it this morning, in the sermons this morning, the language that we've got. What does that language sound like? You see, there's two languages. There's a world language and there's a Holy Spirit language. What language does people hear when we speak? Because God says the language that we use should be for, so that we can bless others yeah. and give grace. That's what God is asking from us. Proverbs 21 verse 23. He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from trouble. Yeah. Ouch. At work, you see, in church is different. In church is different. We, we, we don't have to worry too much about the language. But at work, when, when the pressure is on, that's when the real languages start to come up. What does your language sound like? So, so many times um, we see on bumper stickers, real men follow Christ. Real men follow Jesus. I've got a shirt like that at home as well. And it's awesome. But if you go sit with somebody and you hear but that's not the language, the same language that the sticker says, yeah. we start to think. But let me change this just a little bit. If somebody sits with you, does that st bumper sticker, that, that shirt that I wear, does that? Compliment my language. Does my language compliment that? Is Jesus visible? Is Jesus hearable in my language when I speak to that person? You see, all of this is part of building the house. Number 12. Set for yourself higher standards to which you aim. Refrain from compromising with anything that can influence you or your house other than the owner of the house. Mm -hmm. The moment we compromise, excellence is lost. Does not matter how we do it, what we plan, compromising will cost you and me. We have lost our commitment to the highest levels of excellence because we have lost in so many areas the awe that we have there for God. When we see that new flower, when we hear the birds in the morning, when we just go out into the garden or see the mountains, is that all still there? Is that, wow, God, this is what you give us. Is it still there? You see, the world is robbing us from that. But it's time that we start getting that back into our lives. To have a successful house. To have a successful family. To have a successful house here. We have to have God's call back in our lives. Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. Right. Proverbs 29, uh, 22 verse 29 says, do you, see, uh, do you see a man that diligent and skillful in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Yeah. The Afrikaans Bible says, This man can stand before kings. He does not stand. I have to stand before ordinary people. That is a man who does not compromise with the world. And a man who does not compromise is not only a good builder, his house is strong, his house is steadfast, 
And even more important, he has an excellent and a superior spirit. I have a fortreffelijke geest. That's a man that doesn't compromise. Yeah. Number 13, take control. Take control of your thoughts as well as that that you ponder on. Get away from um, the thoughts that, that encourage worries. The thoughts that encourage fears, fear, anxieties. Because all of these thoughts promote something bigger, something like depression, something like, like I'm not good enough, something like I can't. A positive mindset, a positive outlook on life is a decision, yeah. a choice that we have to make. But to be able to do so, it has to become a lifestyle that we live. Philippians 4 verse 8 says, For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account on these things. Fix your mind on them. Nobody can tell me what to think. Nobody can tell me what to ponder on. So the question asked is, what do I keep my thoughts busy with? What am I feeding my thoughts? What am I pondering on? We are quick to point the finger. You know, it's because of, it's because of that person or because of this. I want to say to you tonight, that's what you allow that becomes a breathing place in your heart. What do you allow? your thoughts to feed from. You see, good or bad, positive or negative, it will affect your house. Allow me to share something that a dear friend of mine shared with me a while back. God has so many advantages for you and me. Do you believe that? God has advantages for us. And he gave us certain promises about these advantages. When we read the word of God, when we study his words, when we ponder on his word, and important, when we do what God's word is saying, we have to do. There are six things that, that he highlighted of getting to these advantages. Listen to the word of God. You can hear God's word. Read the Word of God daily. Study the Word of God daily. Be hungry for the, for the Word of God. Memorize the Word of God. Ponder on and overthink the Word of God every moment. Do what the Word says. Apply it in your life, in your house, in this house that we visit for. You will not see and you will not experience this advantages of God if we only want to ponder on and think of God's word and be in God's word on a Sunday. You see, yeah. this is a lifestyle. Yeah. To get to this advantages, it's a lifestyle, not a once a week or a once in a blue moon thing that has to happen. God is waiting for us. He's waiting for you and me so that He can activate. Or can I rephrase? That you can activate the advantages that He's got for you. Yeah. God's word is more than just a lifestyle, it is life. True. It is the lamp that you need for building your house. You and me. 
Number 14, develop the correct friendships as well as relationships. Good. Something very important that we neglect. And I'm just as guilty of that. We forget to acknowledge the importance of good and strong and healthy friendships and relationships in our lives. Sometimes the, the good, the quality friendships we take for granted. And we more sometimes settle into, a, especially at the workplace, that we settle into the not so good because, you know, I spend more time at work than what I spend at home. Yeah. And before long, we fall into the trap of becoming part of a friendship or a relationship that you never had to be in. True. It's time that we get awake, that we waken and see what's busy happening around us. Because the house is neglected. Mm -hmm. There's a song that we all sing and, and we love the song. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And he calls me friend. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. But can we say today, God is my friend. God is my friend. God is my friend. And I call him. Can we say that? Can we truly say that? Or is it just, he calls me friend? You see, a friendship comes from two sides. A friendship is never a one-sided friendship. A friendship is never a long distance. They don't last. But a close friendship, a, fr a friendship with two sides is a lasting friendship. No friendship can last if it's only one-sided. A good and a strong and a healthy friendship will cost you time. It will cost you effort. And it will even cost you to sacrifice something. Proverbs 13 verse 20 speak of such a friendship. He who walks as a companion with wise men is wise. But he who associates himself self-confident with self-confident fools is a fool himself and shall smart the fool. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says, Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, uh, associations, corrupt and deprave, deprave good manners and morals and character. Can we put in brackets? It corrupt and deprave our house as well. That house that you're busy building will be corrupted by friendships and relationships. That's not of God. True. I don't have to show you. I think if I give you a minute or two this evening, just to think back on the friendships that you have. Good and the not so good ones. Mm -hmm. Who helped you go? Who helped you repair? Who was there for you when you needed a friend to encourage you? You see, a true friend, a genuine friend, will not let you down. He will help you study the plan of your house. He will help you to build. He will be there for you. Yes. I want to say to you tonight, you have a friend like that. You have a friend that is more than just capable. You have a friend that is there to help you to build and repair this house and to get it upright. His name is Holy Spirit. The question is tonight, do we trust Him? Do we trust Him enough that we go to take everything off the table, the add-ons that we started building, the
the things that we started putting onto this house of ours. Are we going to trust this friend of ours enough and allow him to put the blueprint back on the table? Because that's what, that's what he wants to do. Because he wants to see the house strong. Yeah. How much do you trust him? The question that I want is yes, we have a friend like that. It's Holy Spirit. But does he have a friend like that in you? Number 15. Keep a correct and a healthy attitude. It is important. People will upset you. People will make you angry. Because we are all created differently. It is how you're going to handle the situation that counts. Yeah. Practice love, grace, peace with all as well as forgiveness. I think one of the best things that we're going to do in this two months to come is this forgiveness course that Prophet is going to share with us. Forgiveness is one of the biggest things that's making the house fall. Unforgiveness. And sometimes we are so caught up in it, we don't realize anymore that there's unforgiveness. That's why God is giving opportunities like this. For us to have. So that we can learn and so that we can correct, so that the building can come back to the place where it should be. Yes. A proper standing building, a pride and a joy to God. Isn't that what you want? Your building to be a pride and a joy to God? I'm sure, because that's what I want as well. But somewhere, we have to start making changes. Yeah. Somewhere we have to start doing something about it. And coming next month, the first Wednesday, we've got the opportunity to see how God wants it. How God can help us to change. Yeah. Not practicing this will not only cost you it will have an effect on your house. Reject hatred, reject resistance, reject rejection, and reject hostility. These are, are, are all tools that will rob you. And for many, for many, this will bring their house down. Yeah. The correct attitude is that of the Spirit, of Holy Spirit. That is why God wants us to live and walk by the Spirit, His Spirit. Because that's the only way of finishing the house you bought correctly. Galatians 5 verse 22, and 20, verse 22 to 25. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which He presents within accomplishes, is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience. And even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self control, self restraint, and confidence. Uh, confidence. Against such things, there is no law that can bring a charge. And those who belong to, to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, has crucified the flesh, the godless human nature with its passions and appetites and desires. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. I want to end this message by looking at the house. You and me are building this three in one house. This house. My family's house. 
the house that we gathered in as family. It starts with this house. If I'm not going to take care of this house, I cannot take care of the others. So it's important tonight that we understand this house is important. Not only for me. Not only for you. Not only for your family. It's important for God. Yeah. And that is why God wants to share this message tonight with you. So that you understand the importance of your house. And that you will start looking at your house differently. And one way of taking care of this house is the waiting periods that God has given us to wait on Him. To wait on Him for His guidance, His perfect guidance, His plan. But you see, if we're not going to wait, somewhere along the line that me and myself and I are going to take up our blueprint again. And we're going to start doing our own thing again. Making our own plans, the add-ons, and the things that should not be there. The things that we can be penalized for when there's inspection coming up. When there's a storm coming, the things that can blow this house down. But if we remain waiting on God, it can't happen. Because God has got a plan in His hand. Building the house, your house, your family house. And it's going to be hard work. Never, never, no way does it say it's going to be an easy life. But I can say to you tonight that that I've been that I learned over this last couple of years, it is all worthwhile. Yeah. It is worth it. Not just the reward that awaits you and me when we stand back and we look at this house. But knowing that God approves. I think that is the biggest reward that we will ever have. Is when God says, well done, my son. Well done, my daughter. For a house well built. Yeah, sure. Worthy for the owner to take his rightful place. But for the life we live now, build the house correctly. Stick to the plan that you received and take care of the house. The owner of the house wants to enjoy it with you. He wants to spend time with you. And he doesn't want you, he doesn't want to visit. I think the important thing is, it's not a bed and breakfast. Yeah. In many cases, a bed even without a breakfast. That's not what God wants. Mm -hmm. God wants to occupy. And when God occupies, it means every moment of every day He's with you. Does not matter where you go. Whether we, we leave here tonight and we go to Durban, or whether we leave here tonight and we go home, does not matter where we go. When we get up in the morning, it does not matter where we, where we find ourselves. He's there. Yeah. Because He's the occupant of this house. Yeah. The question that I think we have to ask ourselves, where do we take the occupant sometimes to? In, in, in what places do, do, does He find Himself inside of us sometimes? And when we allow him to stay, it means he's part of every moment, of every day. He see and he hear every thought that we have, yeah. every word that we speak, everything that we do and even don't do. And God is not at the name of Jesus. He's at your house. Mm -hmm. Seeking for the best. Because he is the best, the King of Kings. When we sing the, the blessing song, we sing in the morning and in the evenings. 
in your coming and in your going, in your weeping and in your rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. We sing it eight times. Which means He is with you. Yeah? But if we look at the house people, we have to ask ourselves, if the God of the universe, the great I Am, would feel comfortable in this house that I'm building. Whether he will enjoy the structure, whether he will enjoy the space allowed for him in this house. May I ask you tonight, will he enjoy the company? Your house, your family house, this house that we build, that we, that we build. that's for God to stay in. God wants a relationship with you and me. He wants a close and a personal walk with you and me. And it starts with Him. It starts within this body and this place that we allow Him to stay in. Your house. You know, it's so easy that we look at the neighbor's house. It's so easy that we look at the pastor's house. It's so easy that we look at the, the leader's house. I want to say to you tonight, stop that. Look at your own house. Because God is asking from you to build a house good enough, big enough, strong enough for you to stay. Make sure that the building, that you visit building, is correct. That it is strong. And that you are building according to the blueprint the architect has for you. My, my dear friend and brother, if I can call him that, I asked him permission as he walked in tonight. And I want to share something with you that he shared with us on Wednesday evening. Brother um, Lucky made a comment and I want to share it with you and I want to share it with our face, Facebook viewers. You can build the best and the most expensive house there will ever be. You can put all the money you have, you can put every moment that you have into that building, into that house. You can make use of the best security that is available. Sweat, hard work, tears, and much more can go into this house of yours. But, but, if the foundation of your house, your family house, this house, is not correct, strong, and well laid, the house is not going to stay. The only foundation that we can trust, the only foundation that we can rely on, the only foundation that we can build on is God's Word. This foundation has been there from the very beginning and that very same foundation is still being built on today. You can trust it. You can rely that this foundation will not fail you. This foundation has a name. This foundation is called the rock. This foundation is called Jesus Christ. Yeah. It is the foundation that God gave you and me to build on. Whatever we build. And that is not on the blueprint. That is not on this foundation. You can hear my words tonight. It will not stay. It will not last. Yes, it may be beautiful for a while, but it will not withstand the storms. It will not withstand the weather. It does not matter what you do or what you plan. It will not stand the inspection when the time arrives the storms comes against it. Your house, the three in one house. Matthew West sang a song, Me on your mind. I'm leaving you with a question tonight. For building your house, who's on your mind? 
Amen. Father, this evening, there's so much that we have to take in. There's so much that you've given us, Lord, this evening. Not just to ponder on, to think about, but Lord, that we must go back and go inspect. To have an inspection list on the building, the process of the building, that the property that we're busy with. And Lord, that we will make sure that we're busy building on the right foundation. So many of us, Lord, has been tempted by so many things and we started losing focus on this building process. And Father, I know that unforgiveness is such a big, big problem in our lives today. And it begins with forgiving myself. It begins, Lord, by forgiving you because we've been questioning you for so many reasons and so many times with why. Father, help us that we can correct the house. So that the place that we have for you inside of us will be sufficient. That it will be clear of all the rubble, all the nonsense that, that we've gathered. And that you will have the right place inside of us. Father, I thank you for the word this evening. And I thank you that those that listen to this Lord this evening have some food to think about and that we will and, and we will and we can make sure that the houses are ready. I praise you this evening, Father, and I can only do it 